everybody? It's your boy the Kryptonian saying here, bringing you a review for One Piece chapter 592. Now, this was a nice chapter, man. Like, to see the different members of the Straw Hats all get the information that Luffy is going through, the absolute worst of the worst. My favorite scene was obviously the Nami scene because at first you're thinking, oh, she's crying crocodile tears, right? They find out that she's a cat burglar. She had stolen just about everything from underneath their noses. And she breaks down into tears and she's like, look, my captain just watched his brother die right in front of him. He went through all this fighting. He's always been there for us. It's our turn to be there for him. Just let me go. I give him back everything that I've stolen. And she's down on her hands and knees and she's begging. And when they say crocodile tears, I'm like, damn, that's pretty good. She fooled the fuck out of me. But when she steals the scientist along with all the other stuff that she stole, the guy looks up at her and he says, wait a second. Your crocodile tears, they're still there. Why are you still crying? And she says, shut up. And it's in typical Nami fashion. At one point, she's begging for release. The next moment, she's just knocking the fuck out of people, threatening to slap people. It's it's great to see that humor in there. And it's a very serious chapter. So to see each of the Straw Hats have the little quirks and everything that we saw in this chapter where the humor is injected into it, but they're all reacting to the news that Luffy fought and wrecked all this havoc against the Navy. His brother got executed. They know Luffy's in peril. Luffy had been there for each and every one of the Straw Hat members, each during one of their lowest moments. So I like the fact that we see them want to reciprocate that affection and just that loyalty. So I thought that, that was pretty cool. Now, I really love the fact that you see uh, Perona. She's doing this whole crying act because Mihawk tells her, well... Last time I saw Moria, he was alive, but for some reason, he's dead. I don't, I don't buy it all the way. Something else is going on. You can tell from the way he's looking, and he's got the expression like he's deep in thought. But the fact that that's going on, I'm like, oh, shit, they're not really on Thriller Bark. I thought they were on Thriller Bark. They're on a completely different island. And you have Zoro, who knows that Mihawk is there. And I like the little exchange between these two. That was pretty damn interesting. And just like with Rayleigh, it's almost like Mihawk has taken a bit of interest into Zoro. Because he notes the fact that Zoro's got a lot of injuries. But he's fighting against these creatures who are on the island who... They're animals, but they got human instinct, and they've been watching battles for years upon years upon years, so they're very highly skilled. And for someone like Zoro to not be able to make his way through all these different animals and only have made it so far from the castle, it just shows you that they are skilled, they are powerful. Yes, Zoro is banged up. I'm not even sure a healthy Zoro would be able to cut his way through. And the fact that Mihawk is telling him, like, look, with your condition, with your strength, you can't get through there. And he even refers to him as a little kid who's gotten too big for his britches. And that's interesting because when you use terms like that, it's almost like he's saying, you ain't ready yet. And I could see the total setup because in each of these straw hat moments, we're seeing the straw hats with something they have to overcome. And because this is a shonen, the only way to overcome certain things is through trial and error and through training. So with uh, Frankie, you know, Frankie just, you know, pressed the big red button and just blew all this shit up. And yet with Frankie, his training is probably going to be with the scientific stuff. He's going to be a better scientist. He's going to have better inventions. He's going to surpass uh, Vegapunk, and which will be really cool. But it'll allow him to bring something else to the crew to further support Luffy. That way he can make upgrades to the Thousand Sunny. When you have Usopp, Usopp is just a lard ass. So Usopp has to work all that weight off of him. Chopper, he's making his way back. So, you know, Chopper has done his thing. Maybe he'll become a better doctor or some shit. Maybe he'll make some really awesome sandwiches. You know, he can get in the kitchen and help cook. But here's what's interesting, right? You have Zoro. And he can't force his way through. Zoro, the dude will likely get lost. Like this, this fucker will, will end up in a different anime because he gets lost so much. So for Zoro, he can't fight his way only up to a certain point past the castle. The only way he's going to get past it is if he trains with Mihawk. That makes the most sense. Now, will Mihawk actually train him is the question. But the fact that he's smiling as he's looking down on him... That's what makes me think that that's going to happen. And what's really cool about that is the fact that you can see Zoro training with the very guy who he wants to surpass. And his first real test 
will be to subdue these different animals who have these swords. Because the thing is, is Mihawk was able to come through here and basically say, okay, cut all this fighting out. I'll kick anybody's ass who disagrees. He kicked their asses, lives in the fucking castle, and says, hey, they don't even come to this castle because they know shit's about to get real if they come here. So the fact that you have Zoro training with a guy like that and then for him to have to fight his way to the shore like that, that would be a way of showing that Zoro's on the path to actually being on Mihawk's level. And not on the level. I mean, it's still going to be a huge ass gap because Mihawk is a fucking beast. But Zoro's got a lot of potential. I think he sees that in him. So I thought that that was pretty cool. Now, when it comes to Nami, where her training is probably better navigation because she's got all these different weather things. And uh, apparently she tried to steal some type of weather ship that she wasn't skilled enough to use. And this is Nami, for Christ's sake. When she got on Skypea, she was looking around. She was like, oh, shit. Okay, so you do a little twist here. Do a little yank yank here. Do a little bob bob there. Oh, shit. I got all this shit running. The girl can operate anything. If it can get you from point A to point B, she can figure it out. But even this is something that she can't use, which is why she took that damn scientist. So I think that that's pretty cool. And I like how these chapters are tying in with the cover pages. Now, getting into the SBS corner, I thought that this was pretty interesting. Oda threw me for a loop. I was like, man, Sabo's a fucking retcon, man. I can't believe this bullshit, man. Like, Oda using retcons and shit. Get the fuck out of here with this bullshit. That, that was my initial reaction. And then in the SBS corner, I'm going to read the quote. I thought that was pretty interesting. Because it just shows you how far this dude Oda thinks ahead. It's like, you see a fucking crack on the ground. And Oda's just like, oh, no, 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 no. See, you think that that's just a crack on the ground. Well, a hundred chapters from now, it's going to be a fucking earthquake that took place. So, I mean, I thought that that was pretty interesting. See, right here, it says, hello, Mr. Oda. This is just a guess, but in chapter 558, volume 57, there's a shadow on the left edge of the third panel of page 11. It's, it's Sabo's cup. This is my thing. How the fuck did you pick up on that shit? Like, I thought I was good at catching small shit. What the fuck? I, this just shows me, when it comes to Oda, you gotta, you gotta read the chapter, and then you gotta go back. Because I just read these chapters, and as soon as I finish, I cut on the camera. It's like a reaction slash a review. So I go in depth, but at the same time, there's no script. I'm just talking to you guys like a friend who just read something and is just telling you about what I just read. So uh, apparently, you got to read these chapters and then step back and then read them again and read them closely because you got small shit like this. Because Oda just plants everything in there. So this is Oda's response. He says, wow, you guys really pick up on the details. The answer to that is revealed in chapter 585 of this volume. If you have read that, you'll see the same scene there. You can see it's Sabo's cup. But back in chapter 558, revealing Sabo's existence would have been complicated. And it would have complicated things too much. That's why when lots of people ask me, what's the shadow there? I was really surprised and nervous. What's with you people? You were right. Holy shit. It just, wow, that, you are a good prognosticator, whoever caught that, because you probably predicted there was a third person there, which means Luffy had a third brother. I mean, very good job. See, this is what you call somebody looking at evidence in a series and picking up on concrete details and saying, ah, see, this makes sense. This is what's going to happen. That is how you make a theory. Not saying, yeah, um, I think that Zoro's going to get a devil fruit. That's my theory. What the fuck in the series made you think that? See, this is good. This is good. This 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 is good. I like this. So my chapter question to you guys, and I left out Brooke because I thought that that shit was funny where you you know you freeze the people and locks up the bandits and all that, and you basically this music touched people. Didn't really care for that shit. I, I, it's probably gonna be funny in the anime. Okay, if you would have said, let me see your panties, I probably would have liked it. But well, out of all the straw hats, including the ones that we have not seen. In this chapter, so that would be uh, Usopp and Chopper. Whose story did you find the most interesting? My thing, I still think Sanji, though we haven't seen Sanji get the news yet. That's probably in the next chapter. But I'd say Sanji, because Sanji's on an island with a whole bunch of women, or excuse me, men dressed up like women who are trying to turn him out. It's the exact opposite of what he would have wanted. Sanji would have been trying to put his black leg in all the Amazon lilies. That's what Sanji would have done if he'd have been on that island. But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, share. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have an awesome day.